Hey all, I hope you are doing good. Welcome once again to the channel. I'm going to talk about AWS Lambda service in depth. This video is basically for those who are new to the cloud field and want to venture more and want to know more about AWS Lambda, which is one of the leading stack of uh, serverless domain. So in this uh, video, expect some uh, theoretical concepts, basically get it and you get it cleared over here. And also I would be providing you the link of the tool of AWS Lambda console and how uh, to create a function from there. Okay. Before going ahead further, I would just give a brief description about myself. I'm Saborni Bhattacharya, currently working as a cloud support engineer at AWS with previous uh, experience of five years working as a DevOps engineer in Accenture as well as a system engineer in TCS. I have immense interest in different technologies, uh, mainly the cloud field, and in my channel, I generally put up videos for those who are new to the field so that they can get a proper hands-on and proper understanding of the stuffs. A brief disclaimer about uh, this video. It's part of my hobby and these videos are not endorsed by AWS. All opinions are mine. Okay. Coming to what AWS Lambda is. Before understanding the service, you have to understand the word serverless. So. Uh, does the word serverless denote that there are no server? No. So basically, you as a customer or an end, end uh, user, you are just owning your code. And once your code is ready, uh, you know that it, it has run successfully in your local. You have tested everything you want to be available uh, over the cloud. You want to develop, even develop it on the cloud. You can do it by simply uploading the code uh, in the form of a package. And AWS Lambda service would be taking care of that stuff. Okay. So these are the key uh, features and points that I felt, uh, felt that uh, I need to uh, show you. First is, it's, it's basically a cloud compute service without the need of managing a server. You don't own a server here. You just own the code and rest stuff like scaling, um, and time uh, availability, all those stuffs are maintained by AWS. Next important part is you are the owner of the code or the container image that you are providing. That's what I have mentioned. Next is you have a varieties of uh, programming language that you can choose. Okay. Not only Java or Node.js or Python, you can have it on your own. Like for example, you can even upload a Rust, uh, a programming language uh, like Rust. You, you can write the code in that and you can also upload your artifacts, uh, your package uh, in the AWS console. Okay. Next is it's basically ideal for a short event driven workloads. You can run a Lambda function for maximum of 15 minutes. After that, your Lambda function would face timeout error. Okay. Next is you only pay for the duration of the usage of the resource that you're going to use. Say for example, uh, you have created a Lambda function that runs for uh, 10 milliseconds and it, it uses a memory of 60 MB. If you have provisioned 128 MB, then in that case, you have to pay only for that memory and the amount of time uh, for which uh, the function is running. Next striking feature is the CPU power is proportional to the memory provisioned. In the AWS tour, uh, AWS Lambda console tour video, if you see, I, have, I will show, I have already shown you that the amount of memory, you can only configure the provisioning of memory. So if you require something, uh, a higher CPU power, you have to increase the memory in that case. Okay. Next, I'm going to talk about some important terminologies before going ahead further. Function, trigger, event. These are the first three I felt uh, important. And another is the last one, which is destination below. So function, it basically denotes uh, the instance of your code in the Lambda environment. And uh, event basically is a payload uh, or a JSON in the JSON format containing the important data, which would be processed by your function. There's a trigger. Trigger basically denotes it can be either a configuration or an AWS resource that would be uh, invoking your function. That is, it would be sending the payload to your function, the JSON uh, event. And there is a destination. Uh, you can see the destination at the bo bottom of this uh, slide. It's basically an AWS resource that further receives events from AWS Lambda service. Okay, 
that can be uh, it can be either an SQS or SNS or anything. We'll talk about it later on. Now coming to another important uh, pairs uh, term. One is the execution environment. It's a secured, isolated runtime environment for your function. Okay, that manages all the processes and resources that your function is utilizing, and uh, it has an important part that is required for the function to run successfully, which is the runtime. So basically, if you have written down a code in Node.js, you would be requiring npm and Node installed available on the on, on your machine. So those are the runtime dependencies basically, and they are available in the execution environment. As mentioned earlier, if you are going for programming languages uh, such as Rust, which is not natively supported by uh, the service, you can create an upload and uh, you can basically upload an image uh, with uh, the custom runtime. That means that of a Rust. Okay, so that your Rust code, you are able to uh, execute it properly. Next is a deployment package and a layer. So whatever code that you have written has to be uploaded to the Lambda service in the form of a zip archive file or even a container image. That's your choice completely. That would be termed as a deployment package. So a package not only contains the source code, but also the different libraries, dependencies and different uh, binaries that are essential for your function to run uh, properly. Next important part would be a layer. It's an additional zip archive file that contains certain additional codes or libraries that can be shared across multiple functions. So this is utilized when your deployment package is becoming too heavy. Uh, so in that case, uh, you can uh, separate your segregate your dependencies into some other uh, zip files, archive files known as layers. Okay. Next two terms, destination, since I have already discussed earlier, I won't uh, be talking about it now. Two terms is one is a concurrency, another is a qualifier. Concurrency denotes the number of function instances available to process. Say, for example, uh, you have 100 instances of the functions available to address to uh, handle uh, some thousand uh, requests, for example. So if the request is more than that, then your function would face throttling in that case. But in case not, those 100 instances concurrent instances of your function would be able to process the requests coming to qualifier it basically used to identify your certain immutable snapshot of your function which is known as a version and an alias basically a keyword that would be uh, pointing to a specific uh, version of your function we'll talk about it later further just a continuation of uh, the next in the next slide i will go uh, before going to the next slide i'll just uh, like to talk about this event payload it's basically as you can see on the screen it's an event uh, it's basically a json document okay which is received by the lambda service and the lambda service routes it to your lambda function basically okay Next is what I was going to talk about this, the deployment package that one, uh, the developer generally uploads to the service. So there you have an execution environment and there you have the runtime. Okay, and your code is ready to handle the traffics. Next is how you create a Lambda function. In the description, while create, while uh, I, I will be sharing the link where you can create, uh, where I have created a Lambda function and provided you a tool of the AWS Lambda console. Uh, you can have a look on that part and additionally just to give a brief uh, about uh, the how the process is so you write the code you may directly upload it to the console but in case of it's a compiled language like java so you can create a zip archive file and you uh, create a package basically which is a zip archive file or even you can create a container okay and push it to the ecr and uh, you, uh, you can create your function defined as the container image as well. So the Lambda service would be able to understand depending upon the choice that you have made and it would pull the artifacts and will keep your function ready for traffics. Okay, till this point of time, I will take a break and we can have a quick uh, break for a cup of tea or a coffee, anything, any beverages that you would like and let's join in the next session. <music> 